um, I'm starting to realise that we have a really strong desire for God. It could be an addiction expecting us, him, to love us. We have a lot of addictions with God, actually. And in fact, God doesn't respond to addictive demands. That's one thing we need to remember about God. So, you know, this is one way that we can tell whether we have addictions with God. We pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, nothing happens. We pray, we pray, nothing happens. We pray, we pray, nothing happens. We pray. Now, F you, God, I'm not praying no more. <laughs> that tells me that all the previous prayers were all, they were all addictions, they were all demands. Because it's a response. You see, the anger-based response, remember, is when the addiction or expectation or demand is not being met. You see, the truth is you will never get angry when you're out of your addictions. You'll never get angry again. Right? So anger is the result. And I'm not talking about the childhood anger where you're just sitting, you know, when you're processing an emotion and you're laying on the ground just having a good scream. I'm talking about the adult anger where you're just in a rage because something that you wanted did not happen. Does that make sense? And because something we wanted didn't happen, we turn to anger. And the anger is telling us that actually none of what we just did was motivated by a pure motive. It was all motivated by an unloving motive. A motive to avoid a fear or avoid some grief or to control. You see, the anger is a very good guide. Remember, three years ago now, close to I think it is, I gave a talk about anger is your guide. Anger is your... Many of you are yet to learn this, actually. Anger is your guide telling you that, ah, I have an addiction. <laughs> and it's unloving. <laughs> That's telling me. And, and if I look at my expectations and demands in that addiction, I will find and discover the fear that those demands and expectations cover. And if I let myself feel those fears as an emotion, I will actually get to the underlying reason why I did all that in the first place. And while I'm there, now God can connect to me. And God can connect to me because I'm now in my true self. I've now had an awakening to what's going on inside of my own soul because I wanted to, because I made that choice to. Yeah? So when we're in these other places, and we'll talk a bit about the fear later too, but when we're in these addictions, we are, not, we are so far removed from God that we have no chance of connecting. The, we, but we need to go in and down to get to the connection point. So we need to go into the anger. We go, okay, I'm angry. I'm angry. I admit that I'm angry. Okay, there's an addiction in play. Uh, I'm angry, so there's got to be an addiction. And see, most of, even at that point, most of us go, no, it's your fault I'm angry. No, it's your fault I'm angry. No, like it was my husband's fault. You know, he didn't do the right thing by me. It was my wife's fault or my children's fault. Whatever. Somebody, it's always somebody else's fault, right? No, it's because you have expectations and demands that you're angry. That's the only reason why you're angry. Right? So it's within me. There's a, me, my expectations, my demands that create this rage within me. So I go, okay. There's an addiction inside of me that I desperately do not want to release. What is it? This is where prayer now comes into effect, where we can start praying for, to, for God to help us with finding.